Hello fellow simmers, this is Derek at FS Pro with another video in my Jar Design A330 review series. Today I'm looking at flight characteristics. I'm drawing all of the information presented here from the official Airbus flight crew training manual that I managed to download from the internet. This document is 389 pages long and is itself a shortened version of information contained in the four volumes that make up the flight crew operating manuals. Now I haven't got a hope of covering all of that stuff in a decent length video, so I'll be constraining the information to cover how well the Jar Design A330 complies with both normal law and protections as described in the Airbus Flight Crew Training Manual. Let's start with a brief description of what laws mean in the context of the Airbus. The relationship between the pilot flying's input on the side stick and the aircraft's response is referred to as control law. There are three sets of control law and they are normal law, alternate law and direct law. They're provided according to the status of the computers, peripherals and hydraulic generation. So looking at normal law only, let's have a closer look at what the pitch characteristics are. The manual says that if there is no input on the side stick, the aircraft maintains the flight path even in case of speed changes. And in case of configuration changes or thrust variations, the aircraft compensates for the pitching moment effects. OK, so let's try that. You see me here flying over the UK on a standard day. That's zero winds and a QNH of 1013 rather than UK weather usually looking this good. I'm heading due north at 300 knots and 15,000 feet with both the auto throttle and autopilot engaged. The sim's paused, so let's unpause and test. As you can see, there's no autopilot and no auto thrust now. As described, the aircraft maintains the flight path. Now let's try a reduction in speed of, say, 40 knots. All I'm going to do is operate the throttle. Let's watch the pitch trim indication on the ECAM. Interesting. I didn't compensate for the pitching effect caused by the reduction in power, the sim did. But we still experienced a slight reduction in altitude. Heading holds steady though. Recall we have not got the autopilot engaged, we're flying by hand here. Let's try increasing the speed by 40 knots this time. As before, I'll only operate the throttle.
Hmm. Different result this time. Our heading remains, but we have a significant change in altitude. According to the ECAM page, auto trim was applied, but to me at least, it seemed a little slower to respond. Let's hand fly back to 15,000 feet at 300 knots. Now let's look at the lateral characteristics. The manual says at a bank angle of less than 33 degrees, the bank angle is maintained. Automatic turn coordination and your damping with pitch compensation is provided. So that means I should be able to bank using ailerons alone. The aircraft will provide rudder and elevator input and the aircraft will hold the bank when I release this stick. Let's give it a try. Unpause the sim and I'll set up a 10 degree turn. Once I've got to 10 degrees, I'll release the side stick and let's see what happens. OK, behaviour is as expected. I made a coordinated turn without any rudder or elevator input. We're in a 10 degree bank, holding steady altitude. Nice. Now let's try a 30 degree bank in the opposite direction. Once again, behaviour is exactly as expected. So now, how about steep turns? The Airbus is limited to 67 degrees in a bank, more on which later. And it exhibits different characteristics when the angle of bank is between 33 and 67 degrees. Firstly, the aircraft no longer provides pitch compensation. Secondly, the aircraft will not maintain the bank angle when you release the side stick. Instead, it returns to a 33 degree bank. Let's give it a try. Incidentally, I've got some passengers in the back and they'll start screaming once we bank beyond the 33 degrees. Oh well, that's what you get when you book economy. I'm having to apply aft pressure on the stick to maintain altitude. And now, let's release the side stick. As expected, the aircraft returns to 33 degrees bank and then holds that angle when we get there. But notes the effect on the altitude now that we are at 33 degrees. It tends to remain roughly stable at whatever it was. OK, we'll return to straight and level now at 300 knots and 15,000 feet. Now let's see what happens when we have an engine failure according to the manual. In flight, if an engine failure occurs and no input is applied on the side stick, lateral normal law controls the natural tendency of the aircraft to both roll and yaw. If no input's applied on the side stick, the aircraft will reach an approximate 5 degree constant bank angle, a constant side slip and a slowly diverging heading rate. The lateral behaviour of the aircraft is safe. However, the pilot flying is best suited to adapt the lateral trimming technique when necessary. So let's try that. I'll fail engine 2 and I'll make no input on the side stick. So 
So I'm seeing a gentle bank to the right, a reduction in speed, a reduction in altitude and a slight imbalance indicated on the PFD. Let's try and correct the imbalance with left rudder trim. I'll also throttle up to try and maintain about 200 knots. Hmm, difficult. I apply what seems like an appropriate level of rudder trim and the sim me moves too far in that direction. I almost need to remove all trim before I get a countering action. Why is this important? Because if the engine failure were to occur on takeoff, we don't really want to involve the ailerons and spoilers. We have a delicate balancing act to maintain and we'll probably just want to use our boots to keep the sim balanced. Here are the operational recommendations from the manual. In the case of an engine failure at takeoff, the pilot flying must smoothly adjust pitch to maintain a safe speed. Center the beta target. There's no hurry though because the aircraft is laterally safe. When appropriate, trim the aircraft laterally using the rudder trim. Finally, apply small lateral side stick inputs so that the aircraft flies the appropriate heading. So let's try and coordinate that now. As you can see, it's relatively simple to set the sim up so that it flies a steady course, speed and altitude, even with one engine out. So that concludes my review of normal law with the JAR Design A330. How well does it do? Well, in considering all the things that we've just looked at, I'd say it models this section of the Airbus extremely well. Another impressive coding effort, I think. So if I'm giving it a score out of stars, I'm probably going to give it the full score here for modeling normal law, five out of five stars. Nice work, Jar Design. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Stick with me for more in this series of my review of the Jar Design A330 and new videos on new content coming to the channel soon. Until next time, bye for now.